So welcome to today's lesson in dynamical systems. So today under solving systems of linear differential equations, we are going to go through when we have repeated roots or when our again values are repeated. So you know, um, at the undergrad, we are mostly um, we mostly deal with three by three and two by two matrices. So that means that the only case where we will have repeated roots is when two of them are the same or when all the three are the same. So for instance, when our lambda 1 is 2 and our lambda 2 is 2, then I mean you have 2 repeated. Lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 all being 2 means you have 3 repeated. So when you have either 2 repeated or 3 repeated, how do we go about things? The procedure for finding for the again vector is a bit different when we have repeated roots. So for the first again vector, we use the formula. So when you are finding the eigen vector corresponding corresponding sorry to the first um repeated eigen value is the formula a minus lambda i v equals zero, where our lambda is the eigen value and our v here is the corresponding eigen vector. So this is the formula we use here, and after using this formula, then our solution becomes s one of t equals e lambda t v. So we can bring one here, then we can bring v one here. Then C1, where C1 happens to be an arbitrary constant. In some cases, they ignore it. So for our second repeated, we use a formula, and we use this particular formula here to find for our V. And after finding for our V, then the solution is S2 of T equals what we have here, where this V is the argument X you found here, the lambda 2 is the um, again value and you do this um, matrix vector multiplication so when you have three repeated that means we have to extend it so for the third repeated we use the formula a minus lambda i cube v is equal to zero to find for our v and after finding for our v then our s3 of t um the solution for s3 is given by this particular formula that we have here so quickly Let's use this concept to solve an example with three repeated eigen values. So this is the example. So we are supposed to solve this particular system here. So in solving this system, we first have to get our um, coefficient matrix. So note that this is the, of the form x dot equals e x, where this e is our coefficient matrix. So that means here our coefficient matrix is this particular matrix here. So to proceed, the first thing we do is to find for our eigen values, and we find for our eigen values using the formula e minus lambda i, the determinant of that expression, equals zero. So this is what we have here. Where this is your e, this is your lambda, this is your i. The um, identity matrix equals zero. So when you go through this, when you go through this, find the determinant of this three by three matrix then you're going to end up with this characteristic equation and when you solve the characteristic equation you get lambda 1 to be 2 lambda 2 to be 2 and lambda 3 to also be 2 so that means we have three repeated again values in this case so now the question is how do you find for our again vectors and that's what we explained there so we are coming to put it into practice so Finding the argument vector corresponding to the first repeated, that's lambda 1 equals 2. Remember we said we use the formula e minus lambda i v equals 0. So this is a normal formula we've been using to find the argument vector of, um, corresponding to an argument value when we have distinct roots. So this is our e, this is our lambda here is 2, that's the argument value, and this is our identity matrix, and this is our v. So, we are letting the, vein, the vector vein be k1, k2, k3, and it's a zero vector. So when we make this simplification here, we are going to end up with this particular augmented matrix here. And when we get this, the next two is to use our real line operation to make some reductions here. But the first thing we do is that we make sure that um, the first leading element is 1. So we have to make sure this is 1. So the only way to do that is to and multiply with 1 by negative 1 over 6. So you realize that when you do that multiplication, you're going to get 1, 2 over 3, 0, and we get this particular augmented matrix here. So you realize that finally we have our 1 here. Then the next thing we do is that, um, let's go next step. So 
and also the next thing that we do is that we try to make i think i skipped a, a step sorry we try to make um everything beneath um our e110 to realize that when you multiply q by the negative one over six we are going to end up with one two over three zero and you want to make this zero and this zero so that means the formula to do that is um 10 root 1 minus root 2 should be equal to the new root 2 and then we have 4 root 1 plus root 3 we equal to the new root 3 so when we use this particular relation you are going to end up with this particular augmented matrix that we have here and we also want to make sure we make um, our e22 here 1 so to make it 1, we have to multiply 3 by 3. So this is what you see here. If we multiply 3 by 3, we are going to get 1, 3 here. And the next thing is to make sure that the element or all the elements beneath an A22. So this is how A22 becomes 0. So we have to reduce this to 0. So we use this particular relation here. And when we do that, we end up with this particular augmented matrix. And finally, we have this particular um, system here. So when you solve this system, realize that at the third row all our entries are zero right so that means that we have to choose our k3 so our k3 becomes a free coordinate so because k3 is a free coordinate we can choose it to be zero or one but when we choose it to be zero our system is going to be or our solution is going to be um, trivial because we are going to get k1 to be 0, k2 to be 0, and k3 to be 0. So we choose k3 to be 1. So it's a free coordinate. So, um, that's fine. so, but k3 is a free coordinate. So we choose k3 to be 1. That's why we choose it to be 1. So we, when we choose it to be 1, then we can find for our k2, which will be negative 3, our k1, which will be 2. So that means this will be our v1. And when you put inside this formula, then this becomes the solution to our v1. So simple. So the next one is how do you find for the eigenvector corresponding to the second repeated eigenvalue? And that one we use the formula a minus lambda i squared v equals zero. And here's our v. So when you find the square of this particular 3 by 3 matrix here, we will get um this particular augmented matrix here. That's when you try to bring this b here. So you realize that here we have negative 4 3 out 6 3 out negative 2 and um, 2 3 out so that means then we can divide 2 by negative 4 here by 6 and here by negative 2 and we are going to end up with this particular augmented matrix here and when you do our row echelon operation you realize that you are going to say um let the new row 2 be row 2 minus row 1 let the new row 3 be row 3 minus row one so when you do that you realize that this all will be zero all the will three will also be zero so you are going to end up with this you're going to end up with this you realize that um we have zeros in the second row and the third row so that means that uh k2 and k3 both happen to be free coordinates so um, our k2 and k3 are both free coordinates but you remember that in our first case we chose k3 to be 1, it was a free coordinate, we chose it to be 1. So in the second case, even though k2 and k3 are all um, free coordinates, what we do is that we choose k2 to be 1 in the second case and k3 to be 0. Since in the first case, we choose k3 to be 1. So that's the explanation we have here. So when we choose that, that means we are going to get our k2 to be 1, our k3 to be 0, and we use that to calculate for our k1, which will be negative 1. So that means you are going to have this vector here, negative 1, 1, 0, and you put it inside this formula here to get our x2 of t. Then with the third eigenvector corresponding to the third repeated eigenvalue, we use the formula a minus lambda i cube v equals 0. When you find a cube of this particular 3 by 3 matrix here, you're going to get 0 throughout. So that means that in this case, k1 k2 k3 are all free coordinates but remember in the first case we chose k3 to be 1 in the second case we chose k2 to be um 1 so in this third case we are going to choose k1 to be 1 and the rest so k2 will be 0 and k3 will be 0 we choose the rest to be 0 so 
we have this explanation so that means that our vein will be equal to one zero zero and we we'll use that we we'll put that inside this particular relation that we have here to find for our x3 of t so thank you very much this is how to go on things when you have repeated um, eigenvalues thank you